want to start with this. I didn't tell the guys, but I want to start with um, one word, love or hate. I'm just going to go ahead and say love. And before I get into everybody's overall impressions of the uh, show and the premiere, I did want to say that there has been a lot of negative reviews that I have seen. I don't know why it's bugging me so much. My wife is asking me why it's bugging me so much, but I just can't believe the amount of negative reviews I'm seeing of it. And it's just driving me crazy. So you do um, seem to be taking it oddly personally. I'm taking it very personally. And so I have just a, a short message for, um, I don't know, maybe not the haters. Maybe these are Tolkien purists who are just like bogging it down with negative reviews. But I just want to say, take a deep breath and think of the children. I'll explain, explain that in a minute. But, you know, we know that the show is not going to be adapted perfectly from the appendices of the Cimmerillion. It's not going to be exactly what Tolkien wanted. Uh, oh, man. But if you're anything like me, have you not wanted for years additional Lord of the Rings content? A decade after the Peter Jackson films and original ones, we got The Hobbit. Say what you want about it. We got it. Now, a decade later, we're getting the Amazon Lord of the Rings series. So, more content, but at what cost? That's exactly. So, that's, that's what I want to point out. Listen. So, many people, including my brother Ben here, would probably say if it isn't perfect, then we shouldn't have the content at all. But I have. No, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Well, that's a generalization, and I'm okay with that. But I have a couple things to say to that. So, there's two thing, two comparisons I want to make before we get into everything. One is the Wheel of Time series. Okay, I've read a lot of the books. Love the Wheel of Time book series. Amazon adapted it into a TV show. I'm generally very optimistic about these things, and I try to stay optimistic about the quality of the show. Uh, I was pretty disappointed in in the uh, the Wheel of Time series. Was I entertained? Still, yes. Even the ratings post premiere of Wheel of Time were like twice as good as what I'm seeing for the Rings of Power, which is insane. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, am I still <coughs> extremely happy that they adapted the Wheel of Time? Yes, because I love to see fantasy series that I hold dear adapted into some other form of media. Two, and what I think is a stronger argument, is Star Wars. Love Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Ben's rolling his eyes. I don't know why. But listen. If the argument is that if it isn't done perfectly, don't do it at all, we would have never gotten the prequel movies in the early 2000s, okay? The prequel movies in the early 2000s for Star Wars were the first movies that I watched as a kid, and that was my introduction to Star Wars. If it wasn't for those movies, then I never would have been a Star Wars fan and gone back and watched the old movies. Long story short, if we don't allow for more content for Lord of the Rings... My one-year-old son, in 10 years, he's not going to want to go back and watch an old Lord of the Rings movie from 2003, which is, even no matter how many awards it got, is now 30 years old. He's going to look at it and say, you know, the CGI wasn't great or the costumes look goofy. But he might watch a TV series from five or six years ago, become in love with the universe from that, read the books, go back and watch the movies and appreciate them, as I did for the original Star Wars movies, and then we have now have a lifelong fan of Lord of the Rings because of recent content that might not have been perfect. So that is to say, if we don't at least encourage or not discourage additional content from being made, who knows the damage that we're doing to future generations? So I say, think of the children.